We're going to do some other last minutes. Remember, I just washed my hands and I put on a fresh pair of gloves because I'm going to do, and you could do the oral care while you're doing the bath. You could, I could have done it right after I did her face care. Or I can do it at the end. I sometimes like to do it at the end because it's my time to maybe spend a little more time talking to them or interacting with them. But I think there's one more thing maybe I want to do before we do that. How about we change that pillowcase? Think that's a good idea? I think so too. Or we could wait till after we're done too. We'll wait till after we're done, just in case we make a mess. You're right. I like the way you think, Mabel. All right, so we're gonna get a little towel because we want to protect all that clean linen and stuff we just did. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do oral care on somebody that is considered, in Mabel's case, unconscious. Now, one of the things I could do, and probably would not be a bad idea, is I could have done this care while she was laying on her side. Many times they do recommend it being done on her side. If not, I want to get her in a very, very high position. This is called a Fowler's. Get her up as high as you can get her into the bed. It's almost a 90 degree, 100 degree straight up. This is a great position that we use many times, this Fowler position we use many times for oral care. I use it for shaving the person, certainly feeding the person. If we place somebody on a bedpan, once we place them on the bedpan, we always set them up so they can uh, move their bowels easier. So this position we will see pretty frequently used throughout our caregiving. So she's up nice and straight. Now one of the things I'm using and will be using, because I have it, if I don't have it, I could use something else. This is called an emesis basin, and that is spelled E-M-E-S-I-S. Emesis Basin. And basically emesis means a small volume of vomit. And many times we use it in a nursing home or a hospital. You'll find these for somebody that maybe is coughing and maybe spitting up something or maybe is feeling a little nauseated, maybe not really vomiting yet. Uh, and it would just collect a little bit of that. Sometimes we don't have these in assistant living. It's a kidney shaped little basin as you can see. If we have it, we're certainly going to use it. If we don't, we could simply maybe look around and see if we have a plastic bowl. We could use a plastic bowl to do the same thing. I'm going to need a cup. And I'm going to need some water. And this little item here is called a toothette. Many times those are supplied just by hospice or they could be bought at a drug store or a DM DME store which is a durable uh, medical equipment. So I'm going to take a couple of those because I might need a couple of them. I've kind of just kind of shielded her here. So we're going to use the emesis basin because we have it. And I'm just using that to pretty much just store those is what I'm doing. And so I'm opening that, disposing it. And then we're dipping in a little water. Now once you dip it in a little water, it is like a sponge-like material. Um, it may have a little toothpaste flavor flavoring usually. To squeeze it out, you don't squeeze it out with your fingers. Okay, we dip it and to squeeze it out, we just kind of gently roll it along the side of the cup and that squeezes the excess water out of it. We don't want a lot of water in it because she is pretty much comatose. Now, Mabel doesn't have any teeth, so we're going to start by going on to the one side of her mouth, along the gum line, and across the top of the gum line, and across the front and the side. Now, you might find when you do that, there's a little gook here kind of sometimes dried saliva. If you get too much, you change and get another tooth set. I'm going to do that one more time. And around and across the top. Then I usually change and get another one, no matter what. I usually use two, no matter what. Again, squeezing it out. And now what I'm going to do is the top of her mouth. Just going to start at the back of her mouth and I just kind of roll it towards me. Squeeze it out, and now I'm going to do her tongue the same way. Open her mouth as far as I can, start at the back of her tongue, and just roll it towards me. The tongue is really important to concentrate on, especially if she's on oxygen. It can be very dried out. She can have some dried saliva on her tongue, and so now we've got her nice and clean. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and throw that away. Now, I probably shouldn't have thrown that away because there was something I was going to show you. Lucky for me, I have another one. So one of the things that can happen many times when you're doing this task is that even though she is pretty much semi-conscious, I put the toothette in her mouth 
and she bites down on it. That can happen. If she bites down on it, whether she has teeth or she doesn't have teeth, the best thing you can do is just let go. She'll release it eventually. Sometimes they will suck on it just a little bit because it's moist. They haven't had anything to drink for a while. So sometimes that'll happen. Just watch for any possibilities of choking, but just let her hold it in her mouth. She will eventually drop it. To pull and tug on it, it is a spongy material. It can tear off, little tiny piece, and now that's in the back of her throat or in her lungs. Gets sucked into her lungs. So we don't pull or tug, just simply let go. They'll eventually let go too. All right, so we've got our oral care done. You're looking good.